we can stop spending money on crap, right? Actually, some of the healthiest foods are actually some of the cheapest foods. What is one thing that we can do today for our health? Oh, my God. Well, the good news is we have tremendous power over our health, destiny, and longevity. The vast majority of premature death and disability is preventable with a plant-based diet and other healthy lifestyle behaviors. So eating healthy, number one thing we can do. In fact, according to the Global Burden of Disease Study, the largest study of disease risk factors in history funded by the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, the number one cause of death in these um, uh, in the in the world today is a poor diet. So it's, a, it's something we have control over. Um, and so, yeah, that's the number one thing we can do is start eating healthier. Yes, I love it. Okay, what is one thing that we can do today for more wealth, so more abundance in all areas of our life? Uh, more abundance. Um, well, we cannot. We can stop spending money on crap, right? Actually, some of the healthiest foods are actually some of the cheapest foods, like dried beans and purple cabbage and um, apples. And I mean, you know, so uh, it's actually the the processed foods, certainly by the pound, um, are actually really quite expensive and a waste of money. And with the externalities being, your health is impaired as well. And so I encourage people to learn how to cook beans and uh uh, and uh, healthy whole intact grains, um, and uh, and the cheapest way of eating may also be the healthiest way of eating. Absolutely. And when you go to the farmers markets, often if you go toward the end of the day when they're closing, they drop their prices yeah. half price. They don't want to take stuff back. They Absolutely, don't. that's a great tip. Yeah. So often going at the end of the day, and you'll get all of this stuff half price and it's chemical free or organic. So that's another little tip that uh, you guys can take away. Yeah. And sometimes community supported agriculture where they, people can, you can get a box of produce dropped off at your door or, uh, or at a, at a local location um, and uh, support your local farmers and some of the freshest, wonderful stuff. And sometimes you never even know what you're going to get. So all of a sudden you'll be like, oh, what am I going to do with tomatillos? And you learn about all sorts of cool things you can do with tomatillos. It's a lot of fun. Yeah, exactly. And it expands your repertoire. That's right. And you got to get that diversity in your diet too. It's super important. It's good. Okay, last rapid fire. What is one thing that we can do today for more love in our life? Oh, my God. We can be kind to one another. Uh, this is people. I don't know how things are. It sounds like things are much, much better um, uh, in Australia. But here, people's, it's like road rage everywhere not even on the road there's there's grocery store rage and there's you know drug store rage and people just have such a short fuse um, and I think this is the time to really give people the benefit of the doubt. I mean, you have no idea. You know, when someone does something rude to you, you don't have no idea what they've been going through. Maybe they just lost a loved one. This is a really, maybe they just lost their job. You know, th this is the time to be extra special, nice to everybody around you. Um, uh, because this is just, this is a tough time for everyone. So just bend over backwards to be kind, I think. Um, is the way to is the is the way to go really at all times and now uh, particularly so yeah absolutely it goes such a long way those random tiny acts of kindness like smiling at someone as you oh, is, are in the concept, grocery right? store or whatever it just they go um, such a long way right as the problem with the masks is it's yes. hard to see people smile mm -hmm. and so you go around and everyone just looks kind of like a you know stormtrooper and so we we're lacking some of those uh, some of those social cues that just, you know, that you, you, you that get a sense that you don't know, are they scowling at me? Are they, you know, I mean, and, and they may be smiling, <laughs> at, you know, and so that's why, again, we should just always kind of, you know, uh, jump to the conclusion that, oh, they're probably just, uh, everything's probably fine. It's just, uh, uh, you know, this, uh, it's a tough time for everybody. Yeah, and you can still smile with your eyes. That's right. <laughs> yeah.
You draw like a big smiley face on your face. Exactly. Man. That's a great idea. I love that. <laughs> as long as it doesn't look like the Joker or something. Yes. Yeah. I'm sure you could probably buy some masks like that that already have a big That's cheesy true. grin on That's there. That's true. Yeah. That's uh, probably true. <laughs> So this has been so helpful and incredibly informative. Is there anything else that you want to share? Any last parting words of wisdom or anything else that you feel we need to know about this pandemic? Well, you know, I think it's important to recognize. I mean, I think this is, uh, I want to make sure that we take advantage of this time of increased, um, uh, uh, you know, uh, interest uh, on, on pandemic disease to make sure that something even worse doesn't happen in the future. So this is, you know, uh, COVID-19 may be kind of the dry run we needed, the, the fire drill to wake us out of our complacency and to reform the food system before it's too late. You know, the um, uh, as devastating as COVID-19 has been, the, you know, it just may be kind of a dress rehearsal for an even greater threat waiting in the wings of chickens. Uh, according to the US CDC, the leading candidate for the next pandemic after COVID-19 is a bird flu virus by the name of H7N9, which is 100 times deadlier than COVID-19. Instead of one in 250 cases dying, it's a 40% of the people that have become infected with H7N9 have died. You know, the last time a bird flu virus jumped species and triggered a pandemic, it caused the deadliest plague in history. The 1918 flu pandemic killed 50 million people. And uh, so, look, that had a 2% mortality rate. I mean, what if we had a pandemic infecting billions where death is closer to a you know flip of a Corn. But the good news is there's something we can do about it. Just as, you know, shutting down these live animal markets and the exotic um, animal trade may go a long way to per towards preventing the next coronavirus pandemic, reforming the way we raise domestic animals for food may help forestall the next killer flu. Because when we crowd, you know, tens of thousands of animals into these cramped, filthy football field-sized sheds to lie, you know, beak to beak or snout to snout atop their own waist. It's just a breeding ground for disease. The sheer numbers of animals, the overcrowding, the stress crippling their immune systems, the, the lack of fresh air, the lack of sunlight, the, the ammonia from the decomposing waste burning their lungs. Put all these factors together. You really have kind of a perfect storm environment for the emergence and spread of these so-called super strains of influenza. Um, and, you know, uh, the bottom line is that, you know, we shouldn't be risking the lives of millions of people for the sake of cheaper chicken. Mm, totally. This is why it is so important. And we can do something about it today. You can stop right. buying factory farm animal products. Like if you are cutting back on your animal products is the first step. Second step is if you are going to purchase them, please make sure they are from an ethical, sustainable, uh, raised, you know, they're getting grass fed, grass finished, free range, you know, those sorts of things. It's really important and something that we can all do right now. I mean, yeah, studies show that even simple measures like providing straw bedding to pigs so they don't have the immunosuppressive stress of lying on bare concrete their whole lives has shown to decrease swine flu transmission rates, right? And so, you know, the, the animals could uh, use a little social distancing themselves. We should give these animals a little more breathing room. Um, yeah, the way we raise animals has global health public um, implications um, given the rise, the emergence of swine flu and uh, bird flu strains, some of which are even worse than COVID-19. And it makes sense. Like if you visualize like chickens all jammed packed into a football size uh, cage, you know, with uh, um, infections and things like that, like, do you really want to be eating that? Like, really? Yeah, yeah, do you no, really I mean, want to be eating that? Yeah. Like, it does not sound enticing at all. Yeah. I mean, it's like being in an elevator with 5,000 people and someone sneezes. I mean, it's Ugh. just, I mean, this is just, this is how diseases spread. Um, and so, you know, the industry has, you know, pumped the animals full of antibiotics to, to, these, to compensate for the stressful unhygienic conditions. And so, you know, they have to make these decisions in terms of what's better for their bottom line, but they don't realize, you know, there are public health implications for what they do. It's not just their own money that's at stake, but I mean, it could birth a virus. It could go on to kill millions of people. That's why we need to put regulations in place, really move away from animal agriculture altogether. 
Exactly. And remember, you vote with your dollar. Every time you are handing over money, you are saying, I believe in this. I believe in this company. I believe in this product. And we really do need to be conscious consumers because that's how we're going to make a difference. 